Hey, hello, 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 and welcome back to Venture Starters. Hello. And it's great to see everybody coming into our room. Hello, hello. And we already have a lot of people here in the first seconds of us opening the door, which I love to see. Um, tonight is all about life sciences. Uh, if Walter's in the room, Walter, thank you for the artwork that's behind me and Norma. We would really appreciate that you sent that to us. Um, thanks to everybody who actually has sent me some artwork or made suggestions on artwork to help us, you know, sort of step up the venture starters game. And Norma and I really appreciate it. Oh, good. We're almost up to 100 people and we just got ourselves going. If you're planning on pitching tonight, please look for the hand raise function and click on the hand raise function. You've got to be a life science company. So for tonight, especially because I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of people that are going to want to pitch, real important that you're either, you know, you're somewhere in the life sciences world, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, hospital, healthcare, mental health, pharmaceuticals. You know, you guys will all know if you fit into that bucket or not. So please, uh, just so that we have an indication as to how many people are going to be pitching, it will be helpful if you will find the hand raise function and raise your hand now just so we can sort of plan out the rest of our night. couple of quick announcements and then we're going to get into the program. Um, the first thing is, and I mentioned this on Monday, um, we actually had a fantastic event on Monday that was truly inspirational. I think Norma would agree that if we were going to pick our top 10 highlight moments of the entire Venture Starters experience from start to now, Monday night will definitely be in the top 10. If you missed that inspirational presentation by Daniel Russell, we're going to have a video up by tonight or tomorrow morning and absolutely, it's worth watching. So I highly recommend anybody who is a startup founder, especially, to at least watch Daniel. He was amazing, and he brought it, and it was true. I mean, I think there were people in our audience that were even moved to you know tears or tearing at moments. He was really, really outstanding. And, you know, we're lucky, so lucky to have a community like this that can make that uh, kind of magic happen. Thank you, Aaron Doyle, for making that possible. If you're in the room, Aaron, thank you very much. That was really a spectacular event for us. Um, I mentioned this also on Monday, and I didn't want to confuse anybody, but it did cause some confusion. So let me just make this really quick. We have two lists. One is our email list, which we can have as many people on the email list as possible. And thankfully, we have 8,700 people who apparently love to see the emails that we send out. Amazingly, we get almost 50% of the people opening up every single email, which is actually extremely high percentage. And um, we have no problems having everybody stay on the email list. The problem we had is that if you registered for an event earlier this year, we gave everybody an option. Many of you took it, many of you didn't, but the option was to get on a permanent list where you'd be pre-registered for every one of our events. That's where I made a tactical mistake. And I let that list grow a little too big. And thankfully about 10% of the list did reach out to me and we have shrank the list down. And I hope I, hope I won't have to ask again but it turns out that when I add the pre-registration list into Zoom, which sends out a Zoom email with the actual link to the event, and that's for the people who are all pre-registered for every single one, in that particular situation, the combination of that list and everybody who arrives at the last minute and during the day of or isn't on the list and signs up, we actually hit a thousand, our maximum that Zoom for the meeting format that we're in now will allow last Wednesday. And that's when I realized we have a little bit of a problem. So we're, I may ask one more time if we run into that problem again 
for more volunteers to be removed from that list. But right now, I think we're okay. And as a backup, if any, if you see anybody that comes into the event tonight and their name is called Venture Starters, and there might be more than one, it means we did get past the thousand, and we've switched the link to a just a general admission link that uh, w multiple people can get, which essentially is for the late arrivals. But this is a new, this is sort of a new challenge for us. The good news is. We have a thousand people that are really part of the the core of venture starters. They don't come to every one of our events. And if you ask our life science community, most of the people who come to life science may not show up for the other nights. They may be here just for life science. But that said, we actually have a really thriving, amazing community. And um, I can't believe how it all happened the way that it's happening. And I just want to thank all of you for being part of it. There's true magic that is taking place here at our events, but even more so it's taking place outside of our events because you're meeting each other here and then you're going offline out of this event to do your own one-on-ones and a lot of great things are have actually transpired and we've raised a bunch of money for many of you we've helped fill out some of your teams there's just a lot of great things that are happening i also have met a lot of investors that weren't part of my initial friendship circle which helped us launch this entire project and some of those investors are now interested in investing in a lot of you so i'm getting a chance to get involved in some very exciting you know um, even 10 and 20, 20 million dollar conversations and transactions at some very high levels um, that are really exciting that all manifested directly from the Venture Starters community. So we're definitely getting better as we get going. And we're already over 100 people and we just opened the door again. So I'm really pleased to see how popular we've become. Um, Norma's going to make the announcement for next week's event, but I do want to point out that we are going to have an event on May 15th that is going to be the unicorn event for life sciences. And we're going to only handpick seven companies that are going to pitch with their deck. It's going to be a 10 minute presentation instead of like tonight, which is a two minute pitch. So if you would like to be considered for unicorn night, couple of things. Everybody who's presenting tonight you're sort of pre-presenting and we're going to take a look at who presents tonight and see who might fit into our program. But if you're not presenting tonight, you still can be part of it. You just need to email me at mark at mark at And by the way, I'm very interested in seeing as many life sciences decks as possible right now because I actually have investors that are lining up that are interested in this very specific sector. And so I'd like to be able to try and see if I can put more people together and make more magic happen for, for our community. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Norma. Say hi, Norma. You're on mute. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life Science Night. Hi, Justin. I see you waving at me. A um, couple of things. First of all, this is only life sciences. We do have industry-specific evenings, but next week we will do Women's Night. And it is not any, you can do in, be in any industry, but you have to be a woman. But men are also very much invited to come and attend and listen to the ladies pitch their products. Uh, we will have uh, you can be in any industry to pitch next week, but this week, just life sciences. And also this is not service providers. I do see a couple of service providers with their hands up. Um, and we also don't need but one person per company to pitch. Um, so if you are pitching life sciences, tonight is your night. If you're not pitching life sciences, then you need to do uh, one of the nights that are for the, your particular industry. Okay. And uh, as far as Women's Night, we will have a very wonderful evening and I'm looking forward to everyone joining us next week for that. Thank you. And men, please come next week. Uh, you would be surprised if you haven't been showing up to Women Founders Nights. It tends to be that some of the best pitches are on the night that women are are, are doing uh, the, all, the, all of the pitching. 
um, you will miss out on some great pitches if you don't show up next week. And, uh, you know, it's really, and uh, investors, please, we need to be especially helping out the women and, and our underserved communities. It's part of the goal of what we're trying to do here with Venture Starters. Norm and I are making an extra effort to help women founders right now. And that's a real important part of, you know, why we've become the, the community and the event that we are. I also want to just say again, I know this will sound like a broken record for those of you who attend all these events. We don't know everybody in the room. We don't know if there's any bad apples here. We've had very, very few problems over the, you know, I guess we've done about 70 or 80 events maybe in that range now. Um, very few problems, like less than le less than five. I can actually only think of three or four right off the top of my head, which is amazing. But it's really important that you do your own due diligence and anybody that meet you meet through the chat that reaches out to you. We don't know, you know, we don't know what's behind all these faces. We don't know. Just please do your own due diligence. We appreciate it. Um, Norma, is there anything else to mention before we start? No, just that this is for Life Science Founders only, so let's get going. Okay, and if you're going to pitch tonight, please do us the favor of raising your hand now so we know that you are in the room. I want to introduce Mark, who's going to be helping to uh, do the Q&A this evening. Mark, or, can you tell us a little bit about yourself real quick? Yeah, thank you, Mark. My name is Mark Matheson. I'm the vice president of commercialization at a company called Identify Sensors. We're a startup that pitched here not too long ago. I've got 24 years in medical device, specifically in diagnostics and the diagnosis of patient specimen for disease. And uh, most of that time was spent with Abbott Laboratories. And so really excited to be here. Thanks, Mark, and happy to help out. Okay, so it's the Mark and Mark show, it turns out, for tonight for the Q&A portion. And we're going to get started now. So seatbelts on and let's go. <laughs> We're going to start with Nancy Briefs, and I just want to say Norma and I have taken a strong interest in what Nancy is doing, and we're putting our name and reputation on the line to try and help Nancy get to the finish line. So I hope you all take a moment to listen to what Nancy has to say. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Can you allow me to screen share? We're not going to be able to do a screen yeah, share. You're just That's going to have right? to do the two-minute pitch. And I might mention before you get started, there is a clock in the left top corner. And at 30 seconds left of the two minutes, the bell will go off. And then at your two minutes, when you're done, it's ding, ding, ding. So these are just elevator pitches because we're going to have a ton of people that want to pitch tonight. Th thank right. you. Nancy. Go ahead. So um, I want to introduce all of you this evening to Altrix Bio. We're based in Boston, and we've de developed a new drug we call Lucy. It's a novel oral therapy for type 2 diabetes and obesity. Our team has over 100 years of experience in both med tech and pharma. And our drug is a modification of a drug that's been used for 30 years for peptic ulcers. The modification of the drug is a change in composition. So we have a patent on the drug Lucy. We, it came out of um, the uh, Brigham study for six years. We've got two published papers on excellent preclinical results that mimic very much what you're seeing with the GLP-1s. And you're probably wondering if the GLP-1s are doing so well, which they are doing. I just saw a report that said they did $60 billion last year. What is the opportunity for Lucy? We know that 50% of patients that start on those drugs come off the drug in the first year, mainly related to tolerability and safety. We think we could be a nice complement to the GLP-1s at a price point that people can uh, afford. We're raising a $20 million Series A to do our phase one and 2A study. Most of the assets in this class get acquired after 2B. We have expedited regulatory and 
Thank you for listening to our story. There's 30 seconds more, Nancy. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. Okay, yeah. good. So um, in summary, we think it's an excellent time to invest. We've got our clinical trial ready to go. We think that um, our technology could help both patients with diabetes and obesity that we've seen. And we think that with even 2% market share, we could have a blockbuster drug. And strategics have been talking to us about the long-term opportunity. So thank you. And tell us just real quickly about your pathway to FDA approval. Yes. So because our drug has already established safety, we have expedited regulatory, which means in phase one, we can do patients that have both obesity and type two diabetes. We don't have to do a pure safety study. So after uh, SAD and MAD and we do dosing, we're going to do 30 days of chronic, which is usually a pretty good indicator of what the drug is going to look like at six months. And we think that's what we need to trigger uh, an acquisition or an IPO. Mark, do you have any questions? When uh, getting your indications for the therapy, is it specific to an adjunct GLP-1? No, it's uh, going in as a uh, single agent for type 2 diabetes and people that are overweight or have obesity. So it can be used complementary. We've tested that in the lab, but that's not what the indication will be for. Thank you. Okay, great. We're going to move on. Thank you, Nancy. And for those of you who don't know, all the action happens in the chat. So please open up your chat. And then Nancy, if you could do us all a favor and put your information in the chat in the event that there are people in our audience that would like to reach out to you directly, that would be absolutely ideal. And this is the same message for all of those of you who are going to be pitching tonight. Please put your information in the chat. That said, don't spam our chat. Put it in, you know, <laughs> a little bit, but not overly crazy, okay? Our, our community knows what it looks like when it's spam. And I encourage those of you who see that to reach out to the people and let them know so that they can uh, uh, do this appropriately. We're going to move on. Up next is Lynn Donaldson. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. I've been in the industry, the life science industry, for a majority of my career. My degree is pharmacology, and I've worked on a lot of different drugs in a lot of different therapy areas. And we provide product launch services for the pharmaceutical and medical devices industry. We're currently helping a couple of the companies from venture starters to actually, A, get some funding, but also to actually get their launch marketing, their launch strategy prepared. We you have a framework of three pillars. People, which is helping you stay at peak performance. Launching a product is tough. So we help you stay at peak performance with coaching while you're going through this extensive launch process. Then we work on the product, which is the product strategy. Strategy development. Without a clearly defined strategy based on goals, right down to tactics, how do you know where you're going and how you when you actually get there? You've got to have a roadmap. And that's what we build for you. And then the process is our proprietary tool, which is an integrated product strategy tool, which will help you build that roadmap. Now, product launch is a really tough thing to do, but we helped one of our larger pharmaceutical companies get an extra $1.3 billion in sales at launch through helping them with, with their product launch strategy. And Nancy talked about the um, breakthrough products and what uh, what you can actually get from a product. There are some amazing products out there. We understand the science and how to get your market to your product to market successfully. Thank you very much for your time, and we, re we I really appreciate this, Mark and, and Norma. Lynn, does your software help startups at the earliest stages or is it really more for product launch when they're about ready to you know get it after fda approval basically no it, it's early product because one of the things is you've got to be really clear we ask a lot of the entrepreneurs and the startup companies what's your strategy and a lot of them say it's kind of in here You've got to get it out of there and onto uh, either paper or some software that pulls it all together that everybody can see what the strategy is. Because you could be going off at different type directions. We're working with one company and they 
have a lot of things going on, but it's not structured in and housed in a proper structured software that pulls you from your goals right down to your tactics. No point in doing things if it doesn't map back to your bigger goal. What's your biggest goal, your five big goals and working through there. But it's for startups as well. We actually use it in our company. We use it in small companies and we use it in larger companies. Okay, Mark, did you have any questions? Nothing, thank you. Okay, Lynn, is there any savings for Venture Starter members? Of course, we'll give you an extended, um, uh, uh, sorry, an extended, um, what's the word? <laughs> trial, an extended that's trial. It. That's it. And we'll, we actually help you set it up. Because I understand the science or we understand the science, we can help you set it up so that it maximizes what you need it to do. So you get personalized service as well for venture starters people. We want to be part of the community. We want to network. We want to help you. And we want to help you be successful. That's our game, uh, that our ultimate game. And Rajiv's just knocked off because obviously there's Rajiv and I developed the software together. So. Okay, uh, Lynn, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Rajiv, you, because you spoke, you automatically got knocked out of the queue. <laughs> thank you. You're, you're up next, if you did have something yeah. different. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, uh, thank you, Norma. Great to see you. Love the hairdo again. So thank you for that. Uh, so here's an interesting perspective for you all. Harvard, do you know what Harvard Business Review calls the, the biggest silent killer in companies? If you know what it is, feel free to put it in the chat, your speculation or your guess. Well, let me kill the suspense for you. The biggest killer, according to the 2012 Harvard Business Report, was poor communication and failure to share important information. These two factors were cited as being the largest reasons as to why companies fail. In fact, according to a recent Salesforce study, 86% of executives believe that ineffective communication and collaboration are the major causes of business failure. In fact, the survey surveyed 400 companies with 100,000 employees and found that bad communication was costing them $64 million a year and 20% in productivity. Now there is a solution for this, and that solution is the software that we've developed that streamlines communication. If you have good communication, your team members are aligned the right way, and everyone knows what to do and when to do it. And that software is Lily Launch Tools. You can probably see the logo in my Zoom background. Uh, we're happy to offer an extended premium trial with premium onboarding especially for venture startup community, feel free to message me uh, and I'll put my information in the chat as well as my cell phone to send me a text and I'd be happy to speak to you about it. So communication is key. Keep communication simple and streamlined and that will ensure success for your company and your venture. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Norma, again. Okay. We are going to move on to one of Norma and my favorite founders who we haven't seen in a long time. Justin, please, to our investors in the room, listen carefully. Justin's a winner. Could use a little bit of help. Go ahead, Justin. Mark, Norma, thank you so much. It's great to see you both. Uh, to those who don't know me, my name is Justin Ayers. I'm a former healthcare trial lawyer turned health tech entrepreneur, and I'm the founder and CEO of Equality MD. A few years ago, I went to my dermatologist's office, and when I told the doctor that I was gay, he said he couldn't complete the exam because he didn't feel comfortable touching my skin. He left me alone in the room feeling less than human. Sadly, my experience is not uncommon. One in three LGBTQ Americans experience discrimination in a clinical setting, causing one in four to avoid care altogether. One in six are denied care, as I was, and one in eight live in states where providers can legally deny care. Our solution is an AI-powered LGBTQ healthcare and data analytics platform. Our providers complete evidence-based cultural competency training. Our AI <clears throat> match algorithm connects patients with providers based on their unique intersectional identities. We transform new patient journey data into actionable insights. Our insights help health systems, payers, and corporations increase patient engagement, improve patient outcomes, 
generate predictive analytics. And we're also building an exciting new GPT for LGBTQ patients that providers can use in real time. We're an early player in the growing $216 billion LGBTQ healthcare market. We have a paid pilot with Cedar Sinai's LGBTQ Center, which I love the shirt. And we've completed over 32,000 patient surveys and over 350 in-person patient interviews. We really know our customer. In addition, we're the ideal team to meet the needs of our community because we have lived the problem we're solving. I'm a 15 year Surrey law printer. Our VP of product was the first hire at the popular gay dating app Grinder, And our CFO has 16 big edges under our belt. We're the ideal team to have the skill sets required to build a scalable solution. We raised almost $900,000 to date, and we anticipate being acquired in 2028 by a large healthcare corporation, giving our investors a 40X return on their investment. We're in market and ready to take our game to the next level. We're closing a safe note round right now and only have $50,000 left to go. We're looking for investors to help us close this round so we can keep rocking and rolling. Thank you. Cedar Sinai is the hospital that uh, Norma and I, both of our children were born in in Beverly Hills. And just out of curiosity, why did Cedar Sinai, what did they say to you, Justin, as to why they got behind you? They said that they saw our company as, quote, a trust bridge to an underserved community that they didn't know how to reach, which is, I found interesting, given that they're located in West Hollywood and 40% of West Hollywood are gay and bisexual men. And their LGBTQ center is a one of the best in the country for anal cancer screenings and testing and uh, for treatment. And it's also one of the most preventative cancers, a curable, but if left untreated, uh, then it can spread and uh, we all know what that means. So we're helping bring patients into the center to help get them screened for that cancer and help get them mental health through our platform. All right, I, I love it when there's a niche and you know, and Justin's got one and we've been successful in the past investing in niches. So uh, to your inv to investors, please reach out to Justin. We're gonna move on. Mark, I'll have you join me for questions here in a moment. Uh, Bill Donahue, you are up next. Hey, thanks everybody. Thanks for being here. I'm Bill Donahue, President and CEO of CarePoint Solutions. CarePoint's my fourth successful company launch and culminates my 40 year career championing breakthrough life-saving products in clinical diagnostics. Our flagship product, ProQCP, is a first to market SaaS quality management utility. It's designed to address critical challenges in diagnostic accuracy and in laboratory regulatory compliance. Uh, unfortunately, diagnostic errors are a significant global issue. Uh, these, these lead to preventable fatalities and adverse events and, and tragic unnecessary costs. Um, on average, everyone on this call will experience a diagnostic error at least once in your lifetime, perhaps tragically. Um, medical errors are the number three cause of death in the U.S., and alarmingly, diagnostic errors are in the lead and, and have become endemic in healthcare delivery. In response, regulatory agencies are now requiring clinical labs to perform comprehensive risk assessments, a proven strategy to improve accuracy and reduce errors. But because of the industry's staffing shortages, and lack of formal training in risk management, it's pre presented a real challenge for clinical labs and even caregivers performing point of care testing. A point of care, uh, Pro QCP, our product, not only introduces a new standard for diagnostic accuracy, it provides the means for clinicians to achieve it. Pro QCP guides users through a comprehensive risk assessment, it streamlines the lab workflow, it ensures compliance, and it drives operational efficiencies throughout the healthcare system. We're now looking for uh, the last $250,000 to help uh, pave our launch runway as we launch this exciting product. Um, what's really caused us to go for more equity right now uh, is that ISO 15189, the standard that uh, mandates um, uh, performance for all clinical laboratories worldwide, um, it's now been updated to basically mandates product like ours. So we're in a wonderful place and we've got hundreds of thousands of labs now making a move to be compliant by the end of next year. This has expanded and exploded our total addressable market and we're looking for additional funding to make sure we uh, arrive to the party on time. Thanks so much. Okay, Mark, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, does this sit as a complimentary package to the solutions that 
the diagnostic manufacturers often supply with their instrumentation? Yeah, right Right now, um, we're uh, somewhat universal across all platforms and all locations for our healthcare system. So that's very nice to be able to standardize. And um, most of the manufacturers are specific to their own test devices. Um, we cover all of the test devices, which is pretty, uh, pretty nice. Um, and we go way further uh, because we do offer modules specific to each test platform. We're able to pre-populate our program with the specifics for each diagnostic platform. So it's like we're a custom OEM uh, onboarding module almost for all these guys. It's very, very effective. Okay, uh, I guess we're gonna move on. Thank you very much. Up next is Toby. Uh, thank you, Mark and Norma. Yeah, so I and my team of internists and allergists have built a nasal cleaning device uh, to help mitigate the symptoms of, of allergies and congestion. So our unique selling proposition is the convenience and the portability. Our direct competitors are uh, Navage nasal irrigation system, as well as the neti pot. Um, we've done our market research and found out that the users of those, uh, those devices have labeled them both messy and cumbersome. So a lot of times people would buy Navage and maybe use it one time, but don't really get around to it. Um, using it more frequently just because of the how difficult it is to use. So our device is marketed and promoted as a personal hygiene device rather than simply a, a Band-Aid or a medical device to use in, in the time of need. So similar to you brushing your teeth on a daily basis, you would use our device to make sure that you have an, uh, a clean nasal passageways. And uh, the discovery of uh, building a device such like this uh, my father actually interned this. He uh, post uh, heart open or post open heart surgery found out that patients were getting infected because they were breathing down into their wound. So what happens is you have that MRSA uh, virus in their nose. They were breathing down into it, causing that infection. So he thought it would be a good idea to help patients and uh, people in general to clean out their noses on a regular basis. And this one isn't as invasive as those other nasal irrigation devices I mentioned. So our device simply goes into your nostrils and oscillates with a uh, saline saturated tip. It doesn't clear through your entire nasal passageways into the other nostril. So the water isn't dripping down uh, your face. It actually has a funnel where as you hold down the power button, you can see it right here. Uh, the water then flows down to the other side of that water tank on the dirty water side. If you want to contact me, I'm going to drop a YouTube link where it is an explainer video of the product. It also has the CEO, Dr. Z's contact information. Okay, so do, are there any patents? Yes, we patented both the design and um, the, how it works. Are you manufacturing yet? We are manufacturing. So the first 40 units are being manufactured this next month, and then we're building 5,000 units um, in a separate tooling operation the following month. We will start selling it direct to consumer in August of this year. Um, both on our site and Amazon. Okay, Mark, any questions? Former Navage user here. Um, one of the things I disliked about Navage was uh, how you cleaned it and how cumbersome it was. Can you speak to a little bit about user friendliness? Good question. So with our device, we have that water tank that's on the bottom and it's four ounces, so two ounces on each side and you pre-mix your saline before use. Yet it comes with a squeeze bottle of eight ounces. So you basically get four uses out of that. So once you've pre, uh, pre-made pre your saline, you squeeze it into the bottom, you attach it to the product there. And then all you have to do is hold down the power button, put it in your nose, and then it uses the two ounces and then it goes on the other side. After that, you simply take off the water tank and dump it out, put it back and you're done. Are you make are you only selling the system as a one time purchase or are you also selling the plastic containers with the fluid in it? Sure. So we're selling the, the water tank that all comes with the products. Now the tips in the saline are on a recurring basis. So the tips is a one time use. Once you use it, you throw it out and you put a new one the next time you want to use it. So it's similar to your razor blades. Um, while you you know you buy the razor, you have to continuously buy razor blades. And how much are you retailing this for? $85. So under uh, the Navage's base price of $100. And the tips are about $10 uh, free shipping. 
And what's your cost of goods? Although I'm sure it's high at small numbers, but what do you anticipate? Right. About Okay. Very interesting. Are you raising money? I'm not sure I heard you say ask for anything. $25. Yes, we are raising capital right now. Um, a, a million dollars right now we're raising. And that's going to take us through the rest of the manufacturing process, inventory, and marketing. Okay. I'd like to see your deck. It sounds intriguing. And thank you very much. I haven't heard this pitch before. So it's always nice to hear something completely different. <laughs> that neti pot was a very challenging to try. And so I'm encouraged that you might have a better solution. We're going to move on. Oh, go ahead, Norma. Please put your information in the chat so we can all find out how to meet, reach you. Okay, I'll put it in there. We also have a thousand people on our wait list already and a social following of 1.3 million through our allergist. It's, I, I like this one. It does sound really encouraging, and, and I love how simple it sounds. So good, good on you for bringing this to us. Appreciate it. We're going to move on, though. Up next is Breck. Good to see you, Breck. Hey, good to see you again, too. And thanks, Mark and Norma, for putting this on. This is such a great event. And um, I'm Breck. I'm a healthcare disruptor and a scary drug facts patient influencer on social media. Uh, I've been had the privilege to be in healthcare for over 20 years now. And I get to bring wellness clinics to 95% of the country in 10 minutes or less. And this is the nation's largest healthcare collaborative to solve a problem of access in rural uh, parts of America. Uh, due to a shortage, shortage of uh, primary care providers. So we are focused on well care, not sick care. And uh, we're doing what's best for the patient, not the PBM or their uh, health plans. So uh, no other clinic has this reach as we're tapping into my already existing network of more than 20,000 community pharmacies uh, nationwide. And even though we're inside of a pharmacy, we're doing more de-prescribing than prescribing. We're getting patients off of meds that are doing more harm than good. Through pharmacogenomics, we can actually take a more personalized uh, approach to medications and also nutrition as well. So we take a functional approach um, uh, that is combining conventional medicine as well as complementary integrative medicine. We're using technology. We're using artificial intelligence, bioelectronics, uh, and we're using things that are going to really help patients get better and live longer. And uh, maybe uh, we're also building our own GPO. So maybe one of the services or products or patient solutions that you present tonight will be one of the future things that we bring into to BRIM. Uh, we are um, addressing a $94 billion industry with a 40 to 50% lower cost for patients and the health systems. Raising a million, we've got half of that already uh, uh, spoken for, and um, we are on target to do 4.5 million in our first year in revenue, 108 million in the first 36 months. Wow. My and when does your first, I'm sorry, when does your first year start? <laughs> we, or we're, we're setting up, the, yeah, we're setting up the clinics now. Um, so the first 10 are being, uh, being set up right now. And I'll, I'll put my contact information in the chat, as well as a free health um, risk assessment. Feel free to take that as well. Okay, great. Uh, by the way, Breck, I have somebody to introduce to you. So if you'll remember to email me so I can take that email and then forward it on for an introduction, that would be fantastic. I'll do it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mark, do you have any questions? No. Move on. Uh, then we'll, we're going to move on because we have so many people that still want to pitch tonight. Okay, up next is Bob. Hi, Mark. Uh, Bob, and Mark, thank you. Uh, I'm Bob Whitco. I'm a cancer survivor and entrepreneur. I had to undergo a reoperation, a second surgery that was required when my pathologist found what uh, is commonly referred to in layperson's terms as dirty margins. I learned that I was not alone. 23% of women in the U.S. who undergo a lumpectomy surgery for breast cancer must also undergo a reoperation. Worldwide, it's a multi-billion dollar problem. I founded a met surgical with a clear mission to develop and deliver tools that reduce cancer surgery reoperations, enhance surgical outcomes, and reduce treatment costs. Our flagship product is called True Margin. It's a low cost, easy to use class two medical device, a tool used during surgery that solves workflow issues that medical literature points to as the leading cause of reoperations. Imagine if air traffic control had one map and pilots had a different one. Their communication would not be very effective with both the pilot and controller likely confused and having outcomes we do not wanna think about. 
True Margin solves a similar problem between the operating room and the pathology lab by establishing shared maps and improved workflows that eliminate confusion. Last month, the Met Surgical exhibited True Margin at the Academy of Pathologists and the Society of Breast Surgeons annual meetings, where we most frequently heard, why didn't somebody invent this years ago? We recently destroyed, uh, joined the prestigious uh, Innisphere Ventures Life Sciences Incubator Program and are already reaping benefits from it. And if you've already not figured out uh, somewhere up here, we're raising uh, around offering shares on Start Engine, a leading equity crowdfunding platform. We'll use the funds to launch True Margin immediately following this regulatory clearance that is expected later this year. So take a screenshot of now or see my details in the chat and don't hesitate to reach out to me with your questions. Thank you. How much are you raising on Start Engine? $7 million. How much has been raised so far or at least committed? Uh, we launched it just a few days ago and we have 10,000 and 10 new investors. Okay, got it. All right. I, um, uh, Mark, do you have any uh, questions? As for uh, revenue, when this product becomes available, is it a one-time purchase or is it a per-click, per-procedure type revenue stream? So it's, a, um, it's, it, it's actually classified as a supply. And so there's no CPT code or anything like that. It's just, a, uh, so it's a, a per case. And we estimate uh, two kits per surgery at $50 a kit with a 80 to 85% uh, gross margin. Okay, we're gonna move on. Thank you, Bob. Up next is Dr. Robin, who many of you have already seen uh, her amazing presentation about a month ago. Dr. Robin. Hi, Mark. Hi, Norma. Thanks. Norma, I heard you say no service provider, so I'll make it really short. And then I have a, um, I want to tell people how to do a better job in the chat. Um, so I'm a high performance business psychologist, professional confidant. I work in the space between executive coach, therapist, and best friend. I, I work with founders, funders, and executives. I always say you can burn hot and burn fast. You don't have to burn out. I would love to connect. Um, but what I wanted to share with you when you put your contact information in the chat, please add keywords. I've been trying to go back in when people put their contact information and add keywords, but if I don't get them right, because what happens is if you're if somebody sees you and then they want to search the chat at the end, they can't find you because the keywords aren't there. And if they don't remember who you are or your business name, you, you don't exist. So please include keywords when you put stuff in the chat. And if for some reason you cannot save the chat at the end of the night, please send me your email address. I will email you the chat at the end of the night. Those are the two things I wanted to share. Thank you very much. That was very useful information because we have had a number of people who have uh, got the chat and they couldn't find who they were looking for. And then they reach out to Norma and I. And honestly, because mm -hmm. we're a free event, we don't really offer concierge services to everybody who has a request. We don't have the time to do all of that. But that was fantastic advice. Okay. I've had the same thing. People reach out to me. So thanks, Mark. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you, Robin. All right. Uh, Mike Lang, you are next. Yes. Thank you so much. So far, best meeting of the day. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm with a company called Mission 3A, which is a venture studio fund. I lead commercial operations for all of their healthcare portfolio companies. I'm representing Replicare tonight, which is one of the companies I'm commercializing. Replicare is a SaaS-based surgical telepresence platform. It's a two-sided market model. The first problem that we're addressing is on the medical device side. As many of you know, the medical device industry is experiencing rep shortages. And as procedures are moving into the ASC environment, margins are getting compressed. They've got to evolve with technology to address this gap. The other side of the market is healthcare, hospitals, surgeons. Uh, there is a significant uh, issue with la uh, a labor shortage, as well as significant hospital shortages. I believe more so in the last two years than any other period uh, in the in the same uh, term. We are bringing technology that allows surgeons to virtually collaborate with either other surgeons or medical device companies to provide the best experts for every surgery, regardless of location, anytime, anywhere. We have already enrolled 50 surgeons across the United States. 
including from academic medical centers like Yale, Cedars. It's been incredible, and that's been since late January. So the demand is huge. For every surgeon we bring on, we sign up five medical device reps. Each medical device rep pays $500 to join the platform. They save money and can cover more cases. So we're improving healthcare, we're expanding access, and we're doing it with the SaaS-based model, high margin. So we're looking right now to raise 500,000. It's a seed round. Mission 3A puts the first money in. So we've already had our, our initial investment. Uh, the company that uh, Mission 3A has an incredible track record. If anybody has heard of Airstrip, OB, it was the first Apple application that got 510 certification from the FDA and it provided fetal monitoring strips to OBs at home. The same team that developed this, developed this all Apple product. We leveraged the Apple Vision Pro, which captures 3D video, allowing students to be fully immersed in the, uh, in the surgery. It's incredible. So 500,000 with a max cap of $20 million. Uh, we already have half of that. And as soon as we hit revenue, which is gonna be in May, we're gonna expand it to 2 million total raise. Are you so the we're having CEO? a great time, loving it. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Mike, I wanna get, get a question in real yeah. quick. Are you the CEO or are you gonna have a CEO that runs the company? Yeah, Rob Wilburn is the CEO. He's been in the medical advice uh, 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 world for 25 plus years. Trey Moore, who developed that initial application, the 510K app, uh, is the co-founder in every one of the portfolio companies. Okay. And so like the, um, the I guess, geniuses, you're 50 plus and growing, how are they actually interacting directly with the surgeons? I'm not sure I understood that. Yeah, great question. We actually set up cameras uh, in the OR our differentiator is first, gener uh, first generation took up a lot of landscape, a lot of real estate. We're on IV poles and we can set up four to six views and it gives the remote participant full immersion on the back table and the surgical table and allows them to provide the guidance. And we port all of the images from the C-arm, et cetera, right onto the, to the view so that the surgeon can actually have a remote rep laser pointing exactly where the screw needs to go in the surgery. And then that same rep can go to the back table and laser point on all the devices and say, that's the next uh, device that the surgeon needs. It's, it's way cool. It sounds cool, but like are the patients or the insurance companies paying extra for this added like talent? Nope. So okay. the, and what the about brain... liability issues? Uh, if uh, you know the 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 rep actually picks a spot that's a half a, a half an inch off or whatever, mistakes happen. No, so it's um, so first of all, we're all all of our platforms are HIPAA compliant. We leverage AWS HIPAA, Apple HIPAA. Uh, as far as the utilization right now, what reps are doing, they're bringing uh, Apple iPhones and doing FaceTime. So we're actually providing a, a more secure environment and the people that are paying it are the medical device companies because they save time money and they can provide the right experts to every surgery, which they can't do today. Okay, Mark, any uh, questions? Oh, we're good, thank you. Okay, thank we're you. gonna move on then, thank you so much. All right, Martin, Martin from overseas. Welcome, Martin. Yeah, thank you. And thank you uh, to both you and Norma for uh, providing this opportunity uh, every week. I really appreciate it. Um, and my name is Martin Sornes, and I'm the founder of Hero Medical. Uh, uh, you know, we still test hearing about the same uh, way today as in the birth of audiology in the years after World War II. That's almost 80 years with no innovation on procedure. Uh, so we, we really can make an effort there to make uh, audiometry more relevant. And to do that, we need to uh, remove the headphones uh, and test in a free field as that is the natural way we hear. 
and also takes uh, the outer ear uh, ear effects into consideration. Um, pure tone audiometry is uh, very old fashioned, and uh, I want to kind of describe the situation with this quote from the late Professor Oren Harari uh, from the University of San Francisco. Uh, he once said, uh, the electric light did not come from the continuous improvement of candles. And uh, sometimes we really need to rethink things. And uh, audiology is definitely up for, for that. This is a huge market. Uh, the total addressable market for audiometers uh, exceeds uh, $400 million. So that gives us some wiggle room for uh, development. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to me. And I wish everybody a good pitching and a good night. Martin needs some help. So if there's anybody that's interested and passionate about the hearing community and the niche that he is trying to develop, please reach out to Martin. He would benefit tremendously from somebody, especially here in the USA, who could sort of drive his vision uh, to reality. That's just my opinion. Mark, do you have anything to add or are we moving on? I was just interested to know what countries and what the rollout plan for uh, market penetration was. Uh, uh... This uh, the first product we, we are launching is a speech in noise test equipment, and this will naturally be launched in English first. So that means uh, US, uh, UK, and a lot of other countries. Uh, uh, but uh, but it's uh, globally. Uh, this is a standardized method, and we will work uh, towards. Uh, regulatory authorities from day one and uh, hopefully we become the new author uh, new uh, uh, yeah um, standardization so okay th thanks martin we're gonna have to move on but i mark, always love mark, your passion mark just a brief one yeah. i'm i'm working with martin already we've been discussing things Yay. for a he needs so, a team. Jack, get him a team. <laughs> I have a team for him. I put the whole thing together. We're just waiting on something. But uh, right. I, I love what he's doing. And my background is in audiology. So you couldn't get better than that. All so. right. That's actually great news because Martin's been here a, a long time. And he's been trying to find something. And I've he been hoping help. for him. He thank needs you, help. Thank you, Jack. And like... Yeah. And, by the way, to the innovators who like come up with amazing ideas, but you might not be business savvy or you might not have the team that's going to get you to where you go. It's OK to also ask when you come to venture starters for help for team, not just money. Everybody so far has been pitching us on money. But in reality, you know, my belief is that if you're out pitching total strangers for money, it means you have the wrong team at this particular moment. The right teams don't get themselves stuck. They already know how to get warm introductions to investors from within their own, basically, ecosystem. So the, the first red flag that I always notice is people who have to pitch total strangers for, you know, for I'm going to have to mute the room because we got a little bit of background there going on. Sorry about that. Everybody needs to keep their microphone on mute. But anyways, my point is just also look for people who with one, you know, the reality is, is one introduction by the right person can literally change the entire trajectory of a startup. I've seen this happen over and over and over again. Like uh, I have a decade of experience uh, witnessing this. So if you need that warm introduction, whether it's to the buyer or investors, look for people who will join your team to help you do that function. They don't have to run the company or do everything else. They need to do that. The great thing about venture starters is, and you don't even realize it, about half the people who their cameras aren't even on right now, some of them are the one percenters, where for them, everything is easy, where for the other 99% of us, it's a lot difficult. 
And if you can attract a one percenter to join your team, you'd be amazed at what can happen. It's, you know, it's like, you know, rocket fuel. Anyways, uh, that's enough of my little spiel there. Let's move on. Isaac Foster, you're up next. Thank you so much, Norma and Mark. And Mark, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Did you know that 10 million Americans are suffering from long COVID? That their care costs $9,000 per person and that that's a $90 billion market, but there are no pharmaceutical solutions? What is our solution? Andraj has conducted an IRB-approved human clinical trial on a natural product. We published the results in a peer-reviewed medical journal. We attenuated eight out of nine systems, tri uh, symptoms, tripled patients' quality of life, and doctors at UT Health in Mount Sinai are currently using the product. So who's behind Andraj? Um, I'm, my name is Isaac Foster. I'm the CEO. I spent 10 years on Wall Street before doing startups for the last 20 years. I'm joined by a head of sales that has built multiple billion dollar B2B sales organizations and a chief medical officer that has brought multiple products and protocols into clinical practice. So is formula, is our product for long COVID our only product? We have 10 additional products ready to go, each of which addresses multiple billion dollar market opportunities and are already being used by doctors with patients. So how big is this opportunity? Our projections indicate a $350 million revenue stream in the fifth year and profitability after year two. Do we have a lead investor for our Series A? We do. Shepherd Ventures is going to lead our Series A and is currently helping us raise $2 million of bridge to get to that round. What are our fundraising plans? We've invested $4.5 million so far. We're raising $2 million to grow sales and get to cash flow positive. And a 10 million Series A should be our last round, allowing us to bring multiple products to market and drive to a profitable exit. So if there's only one message you take from my talk, I hope it's that 10 million people are suffering from long COVID. Andaraj has a natural solution that is already being used in the market. And that makes us a $100 million opportunity. Now, you may be wondering if we have the persistence, the passion, and the ability to pivot that will be needed to su succeed to exit. Well, for that, you're going to have to get to know us. So please reach out in the chat. We'd love to set up a meeting. Isaac, quick question. Did you, yes, sir. Did you meet Shepard, your lead investor here through Venture We Star? did. Yes, we did. That's what I want to hear. That's exactly why we're doing this. That's why Norm and I do this. Thank you for mentioning that. And we love when we hear success stories. In fact, if anybody has success stories, please share them when you have your chance. Um, uh, Mark, did you have any questions of Isaac? How does a patient get the product? The, the fulfillment is actually done online. So the doctor gives them a, a, a URL either through their um, their app where they're getting their, their health care, and they click on it, and they purchase, purchase it through a shopping cart on our site. Okay. Um, I love your name, by the way. I, you know, I think you got a good uh, marketing name there. All right. We're going to move on because we still have how many? Oh, we got 18 more. But we're gonna we're gonna fit everybody in. Although, please, if you are planning on pitching tonight, you better already have your hand raised. The last thing that Norm and I want to see is in the last five minutes, five people raise their hand, and now all of a sudden, instead of us ending on time, we're about to have to go over. So please, like, plan in advance if you're planning on pitching. All right, we're gonna move on to Ido. You are up next. Hello, Mark. Hello, Norma. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here again. My name is Ido, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Anicha Health, a mental health company. At Anicha, we developed an innovative wearable that helps people regulate the level of stress in real time and discreetly. The device works through vibrations synced with the wearer's breath, activating the vagus nerve, thus increasing the parasympathetic tone in the central nervous system, or in other words, help you relax. Our first market are people who are dealing with stress due to high stress medical treatment. It has been shown in numerous studies that reduced stress and anxiety around surgery sees faster and better recuperation. A recent 2022 review study showed that stress regulation techniques had a positive impact on the surgical stress response and overall recovery. We offer hospital psychology services, a device and program to give to patients who show high levels of pretreatment stress. We've already raised $360,000 and we're looking to raise 600 more to complete the platform perform initial clinical trials, and close a contract with the local Israeli hospital. Already the biggest hospital in Israel is interested in doing a collaborative study with our platform, and we hope to close that contract soon. Medical stress is only the beginning. Once we show clear success in improving physical healing, 
we will be in a great position to help other types of stress and anxiety, including PTSD. Thank you very much for listening. I'm open for questions. Okay. I, I, unfortunately, I faded for the first 10 or 15 seconds trying to answer something, a question, but is this a a SAS or are you at, what are you, what are you? I, I m- might have missed understanding exactly. You, you what can the say we're a, we're a digit, we're a device-based digital therapeutics uh, solution. And the device does what? The device vibrates in sync with the person's breathing. Got it. Okay. So, and, and you've already at least tested your device out on people to get feedback, I assume, right? Of course, over 50 people, and we sold 20 devices to consumers. But our major um, our major outreach is to hospitals. And how are you going to make money with the hospitals? I mean, it can't be that there's a one-time purchase, right? Or is it a, how are you, what is your thoughts on that? The, 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 the model is a program that the patient receives with a device. So, and they get to keep the device after uh, they finish their treatment. So in a, in a, in a treatment cost that, you know, when, when people come to surgery, it costs a lot of money and a device like ours is not a huge addition to the, uh, to the hospital and it will probably expedite the healing process. So the hospital saves at the end. And are you an Israeli company? Cause you mentioned Israeli hospitals. I was just trying to, we are, we are an Israeli company and we are based in Israel. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, thank you so much for staying up late to pitch us tonight. I love that. Uh, Mark, do you have any questions? How is the change in patient um, anxiety measured from from point A to to end point? Well, it's been shown in in numerous studies that uh, um, uh, stress um, influences the immune system and influences inflammation. So the more there's inflammation in the body, the less the person uh, uh, heals. Uh, The speed of healing and the completeness of healing is impacted. And that's how we we go from rela- from our device into relaxation, into reduced stress, reduced inflammation, expedited healing. Okay, we're going to move on. I just want to make this announcement since we're one hour into the program. For those of you who don't come to too many of the Venture Starters events, sometimes the best pitches of the night are in the second hour, and sometimes they're even the last person that pitches. So uh, we've kept the audience pretty much the entire evening, but the second hour, it gets a little more challenging. I know many of you are going to race off to dinner and we have people coming in and out and back and forth. We'll probably have 200 people that will have attended tonight at some amount or portion. But I just want to reemphasize, if you can hang in there for the entire hour, I think you will be just as amazed in the second hour as I was of, of our first hour uh, people pitching. So that said, let's move on. Bruce, you're next up. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you, Mark and Norma. I'm going to tell you about a little story. It's a $180 billion story. CMS, which is Medicare and Medicaid, are treating um, 7 million people with Alzheimer's and dementia at an average cost of $26,000 a year. Oh, excuse me. Yes, per patient. Now, The problem is that they're getting about 500,000 new patients every year that start with dementia and eventually get into Alzheimer's. Well, we have a device that's going to prevent that from happening. It is an electromechanical and also electromagnetic device, which increases cardiac output. We firmly believe, and we also have the data that says when your brain gets more blood, you don't have dementia. This is a very important deal. And of course, we need some money to make it happen. We've got $5 million staked out to do all the design work for manufacturing. We have to get the FDA to get on board. And of course, we have to have it uh, approved for reimbursement at CMS level. We have an MIT scientist who is the world expert in soleus muscles, which are your remote hearts. And what we're doing is we're stimulating those soleus muscles, which are like remote pumping stations, and they provide relief from fluids in your leg. As we get older, of course, we're sitting around and more fluid goes to your legs. I actually have neuropathy in my legs and I've been using the device, which is called Heart Partner, for the last several months. My my legs were getting nighttime cramps, the point I'd get up and walk around and swear and do all kinds of nasty things. Now, there are no more cramps. 
for gramps. It works. But we're not selling it for neuropathy. We're selling this for dementia prevention. 400 to 500,000 people cross the line every year into dementia. It is a simple device. We've got manufacturers lined up. We have CMS and FDA consultants lined up. All we need is some money and we need some more talent. We need some marketing. And I'm going to stop now. So I'm exactly two minutes. Give me a call. Love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Are you going to do a human clinical? We already have. Well, we've like lots and lots of data. What does that mean? Well, we've done we've done our trials um, where we I can I can send you a wonderful chart. Like, like how do, how do you how can you, uh, like I love this topic. Okay. I, dementia is so important. Norma and I, this is part of our gene pools, and we are trying to find the solution. We but got it. how can you how can you test whether somebody had a higher degree of dementia before they tried your and then Actually, they somehow mild, have less? It's it's mild cognitive impairment. It's it's that stage before you reach dementia. What we did is we took, I think, 40 people that had various degrees and we put them on the heart partner for six months. We tested them along the way. They went from bad to good to pretty good to actually better than where they would have been for their same age group. And who was doing that? Did you have doctors doing that? Oh, or yes. you guys? Our, our, our chief scientist is an MIT guy who's the world expert in, in soleus muscles. He's got you know, 24 patents, you know, a, a dozen uh, peer reviewed papers. Uh, he's the real deal. And I'm just the numbers guy that structured the company. Okay, I'd like to see a deck. I will definitely send you a normal <laughs> deck. It's really cool. It's at, least so it's at least worth a dive if there's a chance it might solve some as aspect of dementia. Yeah. I'm still a little, I'm um, not sure you got it yet, but uh, I'd like you to convince me. But thank you. Uh, thanks, Bruce. Mark, did you have thanks. any questions? No, you, you asked the ones I was going to. Thank you. Okay, there we go. All right, let's move on. Aaron Holm, you are next. Hey, thanks very much. <clears throat> thanks, Mark and Norma, for hosting it. And I'm glad to be here and uh, grateful. So my story is I'm a four-time uh, founder. The company I founded now is called Patient Circle, which is a uh, peer coaching community for heart surgery patients. Uh, I'm a four-time founder, two exits, one growing, one closed. SaaS, consumer software. I worked at Amazon in housing. Uh, in 2018, I had a heart attack and a quintuple bypass, uh, and then that led to about five years of partial recovery and depression and a lot of difficulty. Uh, it's likely that everyone here uh, knows someone who's been touched by uh, heart surgery, uh, and it's also likely that the people that you know didn't have anybody to talk to who had been through it and uh, probably went through the process alone. Uh, so. In the US, uh, every year there's 500,000 major heart surgeries and 30 to 40% of these patients experience depression, less than 30% of the patients participate in cardiac rehab. And it's not just heart surgery. Uh, across the world, there's 310 million major surgeries every year. It's increasing by 400,000 cases per year. Uh, and the insight that I had along the way was that uh, major surgery is a scheduled trauma. So for the last three years, I've kind of taken upon myself to build a peer community up here in the Pacific Northwest where we have about 100 people who have been participating uh, in a peer support network. And then last year, I kicked off a pilot program working with the local Swedish hospital system to take 10 patients through a peer coaching program. Uh, and we're about to publish the results, which have seen a dramatic decrease in the amount of anxiety and 100% participation in cardiac rehab. So from there decided to build a, a system called Patient Circle, which is a mix of things. It's an AI-powered virtual peer community, uh, which is a membership-based community, which includes a chatbot to ask all the questions you're afraid to ask, threads, virtual meetings, self-guided courses, uh, peer coaching for heart surgery patients, and then an economy for uh, folks who have had heart surgery to plug back in and provide and give back as coaches, as accredited peer coaches for heart surgery patients. We're raising a seed round and we're about to expand the research project to 500 patients and five coaches in Washington state uh, and expand our list of participating hospitals and clinics. Um, and so that's what we're doing. Um, and I'm happy to take questions uh, online or offline. Thank you. Uh, what Aaron is doing, I, I really love. And I've spent a little bit of time with them on this. And I, the more, if any of you are interested in this particular topic, you won't be wasting your time getting on a one-on-one -on -one call with Aaron. Um, Mark, do you have any questions? No. I'm okay. Good. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's real. And I know this isn't as typical as some of the other things that are pitched here, but what Aaron's doing is going to help a lot of people. It makes a lot of sense when you spend, unfortunately, two minutes is not enough time to actually dedicate to this topic. But I I'm a big believer in it. And Aaron, I'm wishing you the best. Thank you for Thank coming you, and pitching. Okay. All right. Up next is Scott Brown. You're on mute. <laughs> It's usually next to the video button. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, yeah. I didn't know I had to unmute myself. Sorry about that. I'm CEO of Wise Implants. Uh, and Wise Implants has a unique implant for dental and orthopedic solutions where the implant becomes alive with your own cells after eight weeks. The cells are attracted right into the implant. I have a, an MBA from an MS from Pepperdine University. I worked on a NASA medical bone mineral medical team back in the day and i and we've developed a 3d printing mechanism with nanostructure that opens up a honeycomb uh, solution where cells grow right into the implant right into the and you can see the implant in my background uh, we expect to this is a huge market the uh, dental implant market is eight billion dollars the orthopedic market is 60 65 billion dollars and we are meeting with or orthopedic and dental uh oral surgeons uh, on a constant basis we have every time we present this to a dental implant person or an orthopedic implant person they're absolutely amazed our material matches the uh, elasticity of bone it actually you can actually bend the material just like and it has exactly the same Young's modulus of elasticity as bone does. So it's completely non-toxic and it's just as, as twice as strong as standard titanium. And, and it's been tested to have 10 times less inflammation. So we're looking for a $30 million. Uh, in, in, we have, we've been working on this for 10 years of R&D. And uh, we expect that after four or five years, we'll have a billion dollar market cap. Are you able to sell it to go to market now? No, we have to do FDA. We've done in vivo testing with sheep. Got um, it. Okay. So, and, and eight weeks is full of living cells. Right, which is intriguing. I mean, that, and I, there's probably some other applications for this besides uh, dental implants that would be intriguing to like brainstorm. But, um, okay, so I, I'll, I'll just ask the question, which is, what's your valuation at $30 million? Well, we, we expect to do a safe kind of uh, agreement uh, so that we can uh, set the, the valuation after we prove ourselves. However, I, uh, you know, if we were doing it, we'd want to offer it for 33% of the company. Which means okay. A, a pretty large valuation, but our intellectual property is very well proven. Right. Okay. So, I mean, uh, what? how much money do you need in order to get to some milestone where the valuation of the company actually can rise? Well, we with $10 million, we can completely launch and, and get to a, a break-even point. What we want, why we want $30 million is so that we have so that we procure the production of the material. This material is so unique uh, and, and absolutely only comes through 3D printing. These implants are 3D printing at the 10 micron level. So okay, they're, they're very, how, very much, how much of the 30 million have you raised so far? We, we've spent uh, about $2 million doing all of the research development uh, uh, the papers that have been uh, in peer-reviewed uh, journals and so forth. I have an idea for you, but it's probably not the plan and pathway that you're on, but it might be worth, worthy of consideration to raise money. If you want to send me your deck, I'd be curious I, to see what I'll it looks like. Thank okay. You, and and uh, Mark... an email asking to see if we can pitch on the unicorn. Okay, well, let's let me do a little more diving with you to make, see before we uh, we haven't selected anybody for Unicorn Night yet. Mark, did you have any questions? Thank you. 
No, I, I think uh, some more focus around or interested to know about the actual procedures. So, for example, I've had L4 and L5 fused. There was a similar type of um, substance used in, used in my surgery. I'm just interested to know if you've found a niche as to where this works best and why somebody would use this versus something else. Why? Because it's it's utterly non-toxic and it's completely, uh, it's, it's half the weight of it's actually 75% less mass than ordinary implants that are fairly solid. This is open inside. It's completely, it's like one third the, or one, one third the weight of, a, of an ordinary implant. And the cells of the, of the patient go inside all the way through and live within it. And it's sort of spongy. It moves just like L5 would actually move in your spine. But is there an actual problem with implants now where this is needed? Absolutely. I, I didn't have time to get into that, but 500,000 FDA uh, sightings in 2023 for dental implant failures. 500,000. Okay. No. And each okay. of those has a cost of 5,000 or more dollars, depending on the, the area and so on. And and that means it's we have a $2.5 billion problem in a $1.5 billion market. Okay, I'm um, looking forward to seeing your deck and we're gonna move on. Ryan Davenport is up next. Thanks, Mark and Norma and Mark. I'm Ryan Davenport, uh, all the way from Minnesota. And I'm gonna start by saying, I think, I bet you everybody on this call knows somebody, uh, an older adult who fell and suffered a terrible injury. <clears throat> and, uh, well, let's see here. I'm having a little situation. By the way, there's no screen share if that's what you're looking for. No, I was trying to. All right. Well, in the U.S., falls are a $50 billion public health crisis. And look, listen, fall prevention is a great idea. We should all be trying our best, but it doesn't work. More than one in four older adults falls each year and three million end up in the ER. And after the first fall, they're twice as likely to fall again. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we're building the safety vest. It's a wearable fall protection from the hips up to the head, all within a stylish outer shell. Look, if we can't prevent our loved ones from falling, let's at least protect them when they do, whether they're at home or in assisted living or memory care, whatever the situation is. Our prototype has a motion sensor that detects a fall in real time. Airbags inflate in less than half a second, and then they deflate to absorb the impact and it's reusable. Seriously, this is this is a thing. We we've, we've created the prototype. <clears throat> uh, and for decades, all there was for fall protection has been underwear with special padding over the hips. Five years ago, they came out with crash vests for downhill skiers, and, uh, and now they have some airbags that just protect the hips. They just drop down over each side. But if you don't fall one side or the other, what good are they? So. Um, our team includes a leading fall researcher in the U.S. My father, the uh, orthopedic surgeon, designed the safety vest. We have the U.S. patent, and uh, his, uh, his design was informed by his career as an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, we have the fully functional prototype, senior care leaders, nursing home staff, and doctors. They're all telling us that they need this solution because the fact is an older adult falls every second of every hour in the United States. And who's going to pay for this? Medicare is going to pay for it, but we're going to have a consumer uh, platform as well. Uh, we think it'll cost less than $500 to make it, and we have the prototype. And so now we just need to test it in a lab uh, with adults, uh, and then we'll uh, do a pilot study. And I mean, can you go to the bathroom wearing it? I mean, what is it? How is I mean, it sounds yeah, it's a it's a vest. It's uh, think of a vest that maybe someone has one on right now. And the airbags are, these are smaller airbags, not like big car airbags, but they come out from inside and, uh, and inflate in any direct, they inflate outward so that if you fall in any direction, uh, you're, you are protected. So if they're big enough airbags to uh, prevent hip, yes. uh, a hip problem, even though it's at the vest, yeah, yep, okay. they inflate from protect the hips all the way up to the head and they the airbags deflate 
on impact, which is how the uh, impact is absorbed. So that's not a bouncing kind of a thing. There's some things on YouTube. We've seen yeah. the Chinese product and they're, those falls are really ridiculous. And we're talking about real falls, which are really violent. Okay. Well, I can see that there is a need. I'm not, I, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know. It, I don't know. This is brand new idea. Nobody's ever pitched anything like this. You know, we've had like 3000 pitches. You're definitely a unique one. Mark, did yes. you have any ideas? Yeah, more of a comment than a question. Dysautonomia is a condition that causes, uh, you know, chronic syncope, which I think uh, all age groups would benefit from a product like this. Yeah, and we do make it like look like regular clothes. We're going to make it in outerwear, wear it inside. It can be worn for people in a wheelchair uh, because, you know, 38,000 people died from falls in 2021. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. I'd like to see a picture of it when there's a, when you have something visual that you can share. You do. I'll send you a deck. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. We're going to move on. And I do see, hear a little background noise. Let me mute the room again. And please, everybody keep your microphone on mute unless you're speaking. Really appreciate it. When you're done speaking, you can unraise your hand. So you kind of move out of the queue. That helps us. Otherwise I have to try and do it. Up next is Richard Hart. And Richard, you are on mute, and I don't see your video camera moving <laughs> or your, your I'm face. Here, I'm here, and I will uh, uh, right now go live so you can actually see me as well. So thank there you. we go. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm doing multitasking, so it's, it's you. So let me do uh, perhaps share a wind. I think that's going to make a difference in everybody's talk. Um, and this is the win. That's a happy investor putting, uh, give, bringing me $75,000 uh, check, a cashier's check that just came in today, and I just deposited it. So uh, it works really well. This is uh, going to bring us to about $350,000 uh, to date in uh, raising capital. And um, so I'm going to do my pitch. I'm Richard Hart, founder and CEO of Nutrigenic USA Life Sciences. With over 30 year track record of launching and scaling innovative companies, I'm thrilled to be here today to present a groundbreaking opportunity in dental healthcare with 202,000 practicing dentists in the USA and 1.6 million globally. We're tapping into an affluent B2B market valued at $157.9 billion. At Nutrigenic, we specialize in four patented uh, human growth products. Uh, they're in my hand right now. And um, um, they are based on um, human growth factors. Um, these are patented products, uh, which will revolutionize and is revolutionizing oral healthcare and systemic health. We've seen that happen to the overall, uh, uh, overall health of our uh, patients. For our business-to-business -business, uh, B2B line, we offer exoral fix and exoral gel tailored to dentists to enhance their patients' post-procedural recovery following any oral intervention, whether mild or invasive. And for our consumer-focused <laughs> offering, exoral health and exoral gum are distributed directly through the patients through our um, basically dentist network and partners. Uh, what we are looking for is to raise the next round, which is still in our seed round of $2 million. And we invite you to explore our potential with Nutrigenic further by visiting our website, Nutrigenic.com. And then obviously get on our calendar to do a Zoom and Learn session with us. And I thank you for the opportunity to uh, present to you extra oil fix, extra oil gum, and Nutrigenic. All right, Richard. So just out of curiosity, why can't... You just scale up by selling more of your product to more dentists. We can, and we're doing so already. We've started selling uh, these kits that you see over my shoulder and uh, onboarding these dentists. And the kits uh, range from $807, uh, which is one of each of our product, to our diamond kit, which is $13,500. And that, it, that's kind of fueling our company right now organically. Uh, and we have uh, raised, as I said, the needed money to get uh, the exclusivity on these formula lines. And also the, on the other shoulder, you'll see Dr. Zersix Catalong, who's my co-founder and has been in the practice for 34 years. And 
Uh, part of this formulation and offering is uh, his creation and his love for the, the oral world, uh, oral vertical. How many dentists would need to buy the product from you to convince you not to raise $2 million from investors that will dilute the shareholders? Less than 500 at our current burn rate and less than 500 onboarding. And we're we just begun, so we're you know we're onboarding dentists uh, almost every day. I mean, it sounds to me like the key is find somebody who already has relationships with that many dentists who can then literally just start calling their friends and getting you lined up. Um, might be a less expensive tactic than the two million dollar plan that you have. I but I'm curious to see your two million dollar plan. Mark, do you have any questions? That was the exact thing I was going to ask, which is selling network, who are you using, what distributors do you have, and that kind of penetration to bootstrap this rather than dilute more. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, all good. And we're doing exactly what you guys are thinking as well. Good. And the reason I invited Mark to help answer uh, or ask questions is Mark's focused on the pathway to revenues. You know, and when I find people in life sciences that are focused on where show me the revenue makes me pretty excited. As an investor, I always want to see that pathway. You know, too many come and say, I need a, I want to show you my pathway to multiple years of expenses. And when we eventually build it, they will come, you know, when it comes to revenues. And Mark thinks like I, which is, you know, there needs to be a real plan to how you're going to go and capture the dollars, because why are we doing it otherwise? <laughs> By the way, Mark would be a great consultant or somebody to tap if you guys have challenges figuring out how to even get your mind around pathways to revenue, at least in my opinion. We're moving on. I'm sorry, was there a comment? I'm sorry. Thank you, and I appreciate it, Mark. IQ is everything. I, I think uh, that's why I got an advisory board, and I, a lot of my advisory board members are, uh, are PhDs or professors or researchers. And it's, it's amazing uh, how I've been able to surround and attract this uh, talent group. And they all love the product line. They love the future where we are uh, and where we're going to be. I, and that's great. But I'll, uh, again, just, and this is just my opinion, the successful startup team is a combination of people who know the right stuff plus people who know the right people and one person who's super organized. And that kind of seems to be like the like the model where I see that I've succeeded and made the most money investing in that model. And I it's not it's subjective and doesn't impact all of you. But many of you come here with the team that knows the right stuff, but you're missing the people who know the right people. And what I mean by know the right people, they warm introductions for investors. I mean, if you're at the stage where you have to pitch total strangers, fix that problem. That's usually the smartest move. It usually is the fastest way to accelerate a company. All the accelerators out there, they have benefits. But at the end of the day, true acceleration is a team that knows the right people. I'd rather have a team that knows the right people than the right stuff, because we can always find people who know the right stuff. And teams that know how to pivot and know the right people also make me money. Um, anyways, that's just a, one guy's opinion in this crowd. We're going to move on. Stephen Coates, you're up next. Thank you, Mark and Norma. Um, my name is Steve Coates, and um, our company is called G6G Tech. Our product is called G6G Finder, F-I-N-D-R. This product is used by people in research, in medicine, and also uh, software development for artificial intelligence. Essentially, what, we, what the product is, is it's a very, very focused search engine um, to find uh, bioinformatics or AI software. It answers the question, which of these software products should I use or start with? And it tries to narrow down the field for that question. Um, it's a human curated database. There's no fluff, there's no junk in it. Um, and it's got over 3000 or more products. Uh, the initial mar market size is about 300 million. It is a platform that can be used by other verticals, such as energy or IoT or blockchain or things like that, even law. Um, we're looking, for, uh, again, it tries to answer the question of which software product to use. It's a unique search engine. It's a two-step process. The first step is entering a long query. Then you get a list of what are called semantic annotations or basically key phrases. 
you check the ones that are most relevant, hit submit again, and then you get your list of software. Uh, we're looking for 100 to 200,000 to 200, um, for marketing. Uh, we're pre-revenue, so we need to uh, prove the revenue model, which is a subscription model. Um, the subscriptions are very inexpensive, so that wouldn't be hard to do. And um, looking further, maybe in the millions range, two to three million for other verticals. Experienced team. Uh, everybody has either worked for large companies like myself. I used to work for HP and also small startup companies. So very, very experienced team and um, with a unique product. And um, again, um, we're looking to develop that further into more of a small language model. Uh, large language models are a big deal these days. This would be more like a small language model. Thank you. All right. I don't actually have questions because software isn't my expertise. But um, Mark, did you have any? It's the um, the revenue structure and and how uh, the the fee for service or how how that works and and what the the number of customers you'll need to obtain as you go forward. Sure, all that's on a financial uh, model that I've written up already, and um, just with a few percent market share or less, actually, we'll hit the revenue projections. Uh, we're talking about a subscription price of twenty dollars or up to two hundred dollars for an institution, something like that. So very inexpensive. You could even charge more for that matter. Yeah, an individual can afford it. It's not it's not a like thousands of dollars or anything. Yeah. Are you ready to go to market now with at oh, least yes. we have a, version we have 1. A we have a product that is working. It is online and you can use it today right now. Yes. Who is your chief revenue officer? Is there a person yet? Well, I'm the only one who's put the money into it and I put about 200K into it at this point for development. I have an idea how to get you a chief revenue officer without you having to pay a salary. You might be able to start to scale this thing okay. if that would be of interest to you. That's, you know, you and I should talk again. Okay. Um, all yeah. right. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Up next is Joshua Park. Thank you, Mart. Thank you, Norma. Appreciate the time. So my name is Joshua Park. I'm the CEO of Blink Frames. Growing up, I was incredibly uh, fearful that my father was actually going to go blind. So my dad has a genetic eye disorder called keratoconus. It causes your cornea, instead of being nice and curved, to start to cone outwards. Um, my sister has this genetic disease. It's very likely that my wife and I, when we have kids, that our kids will have this disease. So it got me interested very early on in what we call ocular biomechanics in the engineering space. And so back in 2019, me and my co-founder started what is now Blink. And we got fully funded through the National Science Foundation. They originally put in 1.8 million non-diluting into our company. And what we're building is what I'm wearing. We're building frames, as you can see over on my left-hand side too, that have cameras embedded in it. These are a pediatric pair, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 24 hours of battery life. And basically what they're doing is cameras not facing out, but facing in, monitoring your ocular surface all throughout the day. It's the Fitbit for the eye. So we're looking at over 30 different eye diseases that we can monitor by continuously taking images of the eye. And then we relay all of that information to the optometrist, the ophthalmologist, as well as the patient, so they can work together to preserve their vision. We have multiple different patents. It's over a $5 billion market, even just in the pediatrics. The adult market is over $40 billion. We have a great clinical team from Mayo to Western University, UCI, Baylor, all on our, on our advisory board. We have startup experience in the company, which has been great. We're looking for an acquisition in 2028, and we are also FDA cleared as a class two medical device. So that has been huge. We got that two months ago, and we have now onboarded our first two doctors to sell our frames in the pediatric space. Thank you. All right. Very cool. Well, I love that you're you're ready to rock and roll, and it does sound interesting. I'm curious whether there's other things you could detect which might be like something that uh, could could be like there could be a way of notifying the person wearing it instantly that might be of high value, you know, and I don't know if there's like a like a marketing hook that might like that's a, I don't know. I'm just curious. And then how, how much are you going to have to sell these things for? They sound expensive. 
<laughs> great, great question. So one uh, for your first question, we're actually looking at the DOD. So we're working with the Army and the Air Force to do some real time detection of what we would call warfighter readiness, fatigue and focus of the warfighters out in the field, understanding in real time if they are um, being fatigued, if they have a cognitive load that's too high for too long, all of these issues we can do in real time. And for the price point, because of this non-diluting funds we got originally from the NSF, we've been able to keep our CODs very low. We're selling the frames for $500 to the optometrist and the ophthalmologist. They can upsell it from there. And I should also mention that we're raising $2 million round. We have a lead investor, uh, but we're really looking for doctors to partner with us to start selling our frames and to look at some of these other diseases. And is this a situation where if you had enough sales right now, you wouldn't need to raise the $2 million because there's profit margins on your $500 for a sales price? Or you still have to go and do something else before you can mass, mar mass manufacture these? Yeah, so we can make the pediatric frames right now. Um, I mean, some of the funds are being used for manufacturing to, to increase our inventory. But the other big areas, we're FDA cleared in the pediatric space. We're working on our FDA clearance still for the adult space. So that's dry eye, computer vision syndrome, glaucoma, lots of other diseases. And so we do need funds for that, for that pipeline. Makes sense. Mark, anything? Yeah, I may have missed it, but who owns the data? Does it possible to make it agnostic so that you can maybe begin to solve for problems that we don't know our problems yet? 100%. So we own all of the data ourselves. All the data gets streamed off to our servers at night. We we process all of it. Um, we have a lot of very talented data scientists here on staff. And so they are constantly pouring through the data. We have one of the largest data sets in the entire world for ocular imagery. So then we can leverage that to start finding new diseases that doctors have never thought you could monitor on the front of the eye. Great okay, question. neat. It is, a, it's a neat one. Th thank you, Joshua. Uh, we're gonna move on. James Wilson, you are next. Hi, Mark. Uh, just before we start, you started in March. You had a company on board, Amerident, just to let you know, they hooked up with two investors and myself. And we ended up investing and uh, they're moving forward now as, as a company. All right. Thank you for sharing that. No, we no, always love hearing our success this. stories. Thank so you. The you. second one is I pitched in March <laughs> and I was raising 15 million, which was out of this realm. But out of it, I wanted to write down. 3.8 million I got from a real estate investor to build our new facility. 1 million from a follow on angel who doesn't want me to name his name, but he actually watches this every time. Um, and then a half a million from a, a small investor group, just so you know. Thank so you. I mean, I keep hearing this, but most of the time, Norm and I hear this outside of the event. So you no, all no, no, no. This have is, to hear I, this. I want to so, make sure. So I, you know, I want people to know we're literally helping a lot of founders. Well, Scott guys. Brown, who was just on, I just emailed him and gave him a contact at UPenn. They, there's a uh, venture program there that he can work with. So <laughs> lovely. Go ahead, James. All right. So real quickly, um, Zia Biosciences, drug biologics company, uh, started it eight years ago, raised seven and a half million. We're raising uh, 15 million. We've raised about 9.2 million so far. Um, we have over 150 investors. More importantly, what do we do? We are the Tesla of um, drug biologics, meaning that Tesla's main technology is their battery technology. With us, it's called bioencapsulation. We can take drug biologics that are injectable and turn them into pill format. How do we do that? We do that with plants instead of um, doing it with mammalian cells. Uh, we have one drug right now uh, that is in preclinical and we're actually selling it off next year that revenue stream is 26 to $47.5 million, depending on milestones. Um, so we're moving forward. 
I still find this a great network to, to work off of. Uh, we do need help on three different levels, and I'll let it go with this. Number one, I need some uh, uh, an operations person. Number two, we're looking for uh, an additional $5 million investment to cap out our round. And number three, we're looking for uh, somebody that has experience in not just this drug program, but we're also looking for somebody in oncology. Is it... I is the $5 yeah. million dollar round your last round or is this the next? No, round? no, no. It was a $15 million round. We're just capping it out. We have 9 million already committed. So, okay. Yeah. And, it. Yeah. It, over a hundred. The more important thing is, is now let you leave you with this. NASA actually named us. It was a big press release in their bio regenerative uh, group. So we are the group that's going to be going to the moon and to Mars. Um, nice. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, James, that, I'd that, like to actually talk to you one on one. I, I have an idea for how to get the five million. Um, okay, that's so, fine, Mark. I've got your email. Thank you very yeah, much. But, Let's get other people on board. Yeah, right. but uh, real quick, in case Mark had anything, Mark, did you have any questions? You're are you good? You're you're good. Okay, thank you, James. We're gonna move on. Right, thank you. Right, okay, right. Toter, you are up next. Hello, thank you, Mark and Norma. I'm uh, Todor Karalanov, and I'm a CEO and founder of Predigma. Um, I have developed during my career quantum uh, technologies, sensors to detect brain and heart activity. That's through detecting the magnetic field, so completely non-invasively even remotely, if you wish, and have work also on imaging the entire body. Uh, so Predigma, the company, we are building the Star Trek recorder for the heart. We want to detect and diagnose arrhythmias and ischemic uh, disease. And our ultimate goal is to predict sudden cardiac death, not to diagnose, because you cannot diagnose it, because it takes a few minutes and, you, and it's done. And this, as you know, the sudden cardiac death is number one cause of death worldwide and also in US with 250,000 uh, 250, deaths in US and 6 million in the world. So we wanna use a quantum sensor that sits outside the body, completely non-invasive, like this mouse, a little bit bigger, and it's gonna detect the magnetic field of the heart and it's gonna diagnose all kinds of diseases including a lot of arrhythmias, and uh, uh, predict sudden cardiac death. I mean, that is a big deal for us. Market, I don't have to mention what the market is, but you can scale it uh, from the ECGs that are performing in US, about 100 million per, per year. So th this market is at 2.5 billion. If we catch only 5 to 7% of this, so if only 5 to 7% of the ECG is done in US, globally, it's around $15 billion. Uh, so we are raising $2 million uh, and that's our seat uh, around. That's for a feasibility study. We have to prove that technology works. Although I have done uh, similar things. And this, the thing is that we have to do it affordably. That is the goal, affordability. Such technology exists, but it's not affordable. It cannot be scaled. Thank you. Okay, that was you just answered the question that I was about to ask. Was it looked like it was pretty expensive, and I was curious how that was going to play out. And who are you planning on selling this to? This is to uh, so so the model is really point of care settings. Plus, I would like to see actually this relatively small devices uh, to be implemented and all over the the place, like in the uh, in the future in the Walmart clinics and the Amazon clinics. It shouldn't be harder because it's going to have an ML AI component. It shouldn't be harder to, to measure the heart activity and all that and predict the sun cardiac death, harder than measuring blood pressure. Can it, be, can, it, can it give you accurate results by being applied on top of fabric or does it have to actually be on skin? No, it doesn't have to be on skin. Okay, I can over. see a potential market then. Mark, did you have any questions? Yeah, the, the words diagnose and predict are pretty powerful in medical device and life sciences. I'm wondering what what's your clinical staff looks like and their ability to carry out those studies. So, so currently 
without naming, we are uh, collaborating with uh, leading university in uh, magnetocardiography that's using the magnetic field to uh, to do a cardio uh, diagnosis. And uh, uh, of course, this will take a lot of money. We have to ha go through FDA. We have to have a clinical study. But we are building on already proved technology that works. Simply, it's not affordable. So we are not introducing some completely new tech. It is completely new because it's affordable. That is the main goal. It's a different technology. It's based on quantum sensors, but this time affordable. OK, that, we look forward to hearing more. And I'm curious to see where it goes. Thank you very much for pitching. All right, next up is John, who has one of the best New, like, I, I don't know. I'm personally smitten by what John is doing, and I really think it's great. And um, you guys should be excited about it, too. I'll let John explain it. He'll do way better than me, that's for sure. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Norma, for hosting this. Um, so we're wearable dose. We do precision cancer therapy. We're a class 2, uh, two FDA device, and uh, we're 510K exempt and we have approved reimbursement codes already. So what we do is real-time in vivo dosimetry, which allows um, uh, fewer treatments and side effects during cancer treatment. So we can essentially tell the, uh, the clinician in real time the radiation that's going into the patient. The problem that we're trying to manage is put patient, um, patient movement during management. If a patient moves during, uh, during treatment, you essentially get risk to healthy tissue as well as overdosing and underdosing and you reduce uh, the uh, remission uh, possibilities and have uh, reoccurrence of cancer. How do we do this? Well, actually, let's talk a little bit of how it's, uh, how it's addressed today. How it's addressed today is through anesthesia, immobilization, optical monitoring. All these things are trying to measure what's actually going into the patient. Nothing is that being leaving the source going to the patient. Nothing is actually measuring the absorbed dose of the patient. So what we have is this, um, this beautiful patch right here, which does precision measurement. It goes on the patient. If the patient moves during treatment, you can actually tell exactly where uh, the radiation is. We can measure radiation at a double X and a double Y axis down to 70 microns. We're taking all that data as well, and we're building a, um, a deep learning model, which brings all uh, National Cancer Institute's clinical data together, and we can provide that to the clinician in real time. We can reduce cancer treatment by up to 60% and actually reduce the length of treatment by up to 40%. Uh, so when it comes to precision, accuracy, patient adaptability, real-time monitoring. We're in a class of our own when it comes to other dosimeters. And uh, we have already been embraced by the ecosystem everywhere from St. Jude Children's Hospital, uh, CTIP, and we were at the top five pediatric device earlier this year by the Alliance of Pediatric Devices. Thank you. How much are you raising? Five million. Okay, Mark, are you here? Do you have any questions? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. We're running out of time as the night is sort of ending. I wish we had John earlier on. But if, for those of you who are still in the room, you should reach out to John and listen to him go through this, what he's doing in more than two minutes. I had the, uh, I had the luxury of being able to do that with John a few days back. And I am very, very impressed with this one. And I think it needs to get funded. It needs to get to the finish line. The more you learn, the more you'll like it is my guess. At least that was the case with me. So I wish you the best, John. I'm really glad you're able to attend tonight. We're going to move on. Allison London Brown is next. Thank you. I know uh, we're uh, last couple up here, so I appreciate the time tonight. Um, I'm Allison London Brown. Um, I was recently named as one of the top 250 female founders by Inc. Magazine, which was a great uh, honor and was was humbling for us as we're working towards curing and solving one of the biggest problems in healthcare for women's health today, which is uterine disorder diagnostics. And I'm not going to make it icky, but we are talking about female parts tonight, guys. We're talking about vaginas and uteruses and all those things. But most importantly, we're talking about abnormal uterine bleeding. And what that means is that over a third of women every single year experience abnormal uterine bleeding but it takes more than 19 months for a woman to be diagnosed 
with uterine cancer. And that is resulting in the fastest growing mortality rate. If you are a woman of color, I happen to be Hispanic, but if you are a woman of color, you are 90% likely to have uh, a death due to your diagnosis. So we're talking about a huge market. Today, the devices that are used are either extremely costly, they're extremely painful, and they are less than 50% accurate. Um, I have myself been in this market um, and in women's health for over 25 years. I've launched over 90 products and services with companies like j and I ran the pelvic floor and incontinence group there. I was a general manager at GE. I have a very robust team of experienced people. We are seeking a $5 million um, uh, round, a seed round, um, to further commercialize our latest product, which is this diagnostic device. We have IP, we have reimbursement, I've got contracts, I've got customers, I've even got strategic deals, but we are looking to raise this money to get our valuation up and drive additional revenue. Thank you. I'm interested. I don't know. Did you send me a deck yet on this I one? I did. I sent you okay. an email yesterday, Mark. Oh, yesterday. Well, then I would not have seen it yet. Okay. I'm really interested in learning more. On the surface, it sounds like something that Norma and I want to get behind, which is, you know, we want to help women founders and issues that affect women's bodies. And so this sort of fits where at least we've been putting some of our time and energy. So I'd like to actually get a one-on-one -on -one with you at some point. Just to get Super. to you, I'm sure Norma, if she's available, she'll join in as well. Well, Allison, I'd love for you to pitch at the women's night because yeah, I I would love to do that. I'm East Coast time, so I I you know we have to make it work out. But uh, just, I'm trying I to stick in there tonight. You, if you get there early, I'll get you in early so that you can thank get you. it and get out. But thank, thank you, and you. I think it would be a great idea because I love what you're pitching. Thank I hope you. you. I appreciate I hope it. Get it done. Yeah, yeah, and I want... put some pictures in the um, video, so or in videos in the uh, chats, if anybody wants to. And I actually think that for some of you founders who have been pitching, you might take some lessons from Allison about how to pitch. She actually brought energy, and she brought up the most important points that would get an investor interested. You know, it was very well done. Thank and, you. And you know, again, to all of you founders, if bring your excitement and enthusiasm because if you're not excited and enthusiastic, why should we, I mean, you know, it's, it's infectious and you want to like pull us in and well, I'm talking about talk. female parts. Of course I'm going to, well, be it, but not, you know. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of people who have come and pitched us about female parts and they weren't all as interesting <laughs> and, and as, as the way you presented. So Allison, uh, like Thank I you, said, Mark. sometimes the, the best pitches of the night are at the very end. It turns out Safe Qual happens to be a really, really, really good one and is going to be our last pitch of the night. Well, thank you, Mark and team. And, and I'm going to try to give her a run for her money here. So thank you so much. And and we'll put our information in the chat, you know, just so it's on the transcript so you can reach out to us as well. Uh, we are Safe Qual. Uh, we're a New York-based SaaS company that provides software to healthcare systems, and we're conducting a pre-Series A raise right now. One out of every 13 patients who enters a hospital experiences preventable harm. You almost certainly know somebody like this. Our software is purpose-built to drive better productivity and outcomes in patient safety, quality, and risk across all care settings. Medical errors are the third leading cause of death in the United States. Some examples of the most common medical errors are incorrect diagnosis, infections, and diagnostic errors. They're spending currently today over $2 billion annually on software to measure and manage medical errors. And we can all agree they don't do enough to date. Uh, they are required to reduce medical errors and that takes vulnerable time away from doctors and nurses. Imagine if we can reduce that by 20% uh, the time they spend on quality assurance. And due to the shortage of nurses, which we're all aware of, these savings that SafeQual delivers becomes an immediate tangible ROI to the healthcare systems. Our current product market fit covers a TAM of $2.8 billion, which reflects our ability to service the SMB, mid-market, and enterprise segments across the entire U.S. healthcare system. We integrate with both the EMR and HR systems to provide a safe space for non-discoverable incident reporting documentation. Now, that's important, and that's why they use us for current EMR. 
as innovators, were the first to introduce AI into the space as a second set of eyes to, pro to promote critical thinking for root cause analysis. And we've partnered with Power DMS to provide a 360 degree coverage of the compliance and governance needs as well. As far as the competition goes, we've com we compete against and have replaced the top market share competitors on RFPs already. So we've proven that product market fit, which is a huge milestone and also confirms our ability to deliver. Thank you very much. They've proven market fit. They have revenues. The hospitals just don't all know about them or are, isn't in the buying cycle for them just yet. If there's anybody in the room who actually can help them with sales, they're ready to start to generate revenue, increased revenue immediately. And uh, they may also be a good investment option as well. So check out uh, Safe Qual. It's a good one. Um, I don't have any comments unless, Mark, you had any uh, quick questions uh, uh, on on this one. No, I, I was going to ask about uh, distribution network and how the uh, whether it's a direct sales force or whether you're, you're using a third party. Yeah, we have a direct sales force. Uh, we are over 400000 in annual recurring revenue right now on a pathway to be over a million in annual recurring revenue by uh, next year. Uh, and we have a, a team as well as partnerships uh, that are uh, uh, referring us as part of a combined package to the market. You might want, Mark, you two might actually be, uh, you should probably talk. That's yeah, my- Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was gonna say. I think I think we should have a, we should have a chat offline. Uh, exactly. We'd love to. Yeah, we, we are, we've definitely been proven. We are in healthcare systems from Washington State to New York, where we're, we're based out of. So we're definitely doing well with traction on um, taking away. It's just a matter of uh, about a nine month sales cycle on those deals. And so we have a healthy pipeline of over 3 million right now. So it's just a timing factor right now. So, Okay, awesome. I think that tonight was spectacular. We had some of the great pitches of the, of the year already. Um, loved uh, all the innovative ideas and solutions to making us healthier. And uh, it was just a pleasure, I have to say, to sit back and listen to all of you pitch tonight. It was also nice to see uh, Dr. Jack Torabin here. That's two weeks in a row. I'm curious if a new trend is going to start, Jack. Um, but in any event, uh, <laughs> you're on mute. But in any of <laughs> In any event, I do. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see me more often now. Okay, cool. All I've, right. I've rearranged my schedule so I start the calls to Europe earlier in the morning. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, you know, venture starters is a thing where, as you even heard a couple of times tonight, we're manifesting magic. So get involved. We're free. We're an open to the community, you know, um, event and bring, you know, recommend us to people that you know that we're stronger by numbers. So please help us by spreading the word. And um, is Jerry in the room? I'm sorry. I saw Jerry earlier. There's a New York event that I don't know if we lost Jerry. Shoot. Um, he did leave. I've been promoting this event in New York City that's part of Health Innovation Week. It's May 6th through 8th. Hit Lab is actually putting it on. It's mostly focused on digital health. I highly recommend it. There is a, a way of saving a little bit of money if you want to actually attend uh, by uh, going and looking at the uh, codes or clicks or whatever it was that we embedded into our email. Um, anyways, just as a thought for some of you, Oh, I see John uh, uh, Dan's in the audience as well there. Anyways, it was great to see everybody tonight. Th and Mark, thank you very much. First time volunteering to help us with some really great questions. And I have to say, it's really refreshing to have somebody who's focused on revenues, you know, involved in the way that we're presenting and asking the questions. Because at the end of the day, from an investor perspective, that's what we care most about. Show us the revenue, show us the profits. We do understand there's expenses to get to it, but we want to see where are we going and why should we put our money in these things? Um, and I, I'm hoping we'll have more conversations around that. 
Uh, next week, we've got Women Founders Night. And then uh, May 15th, we've got the Unicorn Event for Life Sciences. And then Technology Night is at the end of May. I don't know if we're going to be able to schedule any more events in May just because of situations with Norma and I and our, our busyness. And also, there's Memorial Day weekend, which interferes with a little bit of things. So, uh, But in June, we're going to bring back a lot of events and we just hope you all continue to show up because, in my opinion, there's no better use of our time than to spend a couple of hours meeting people that are this smart, this talented in the way that we do this. And uh, I hope to see all of you again. Norma, do you have any final thoughts for tonight? Um, just that I'm really excited about next week, which is our Women's Night. And uh, of course, we would really like all of the gentlemen to come and watch the ladies. Of course, investors are always welcome. And thank you, investors, for coming and, and participating in our program. We really appreciate that you come. Um, and exciting news will be shared with you next week. So I'll save that for next week. But um, thank you very much. And it was really great to see all this amazing things that are happening in the life sciences. It's very exciting. Mark and I are very interested in life sciences. So um, we've invested in a lot, and we think that a lot of other investors probably feel the same way. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been great seeing you. Thank you. Have a great night. You can hey, Mark, I'm going to, I want to toss in a 30-second PSA to all the first-time uh, entrepreneurs in medtech. Uh, if you tend to be in in, uh, in in market in the next three years or or less, Hopefully you've already met your principal investigator and got your clinical trials set up because it's going to take that long, if not longer. Absolutely. So uh, you really need to be in touch with the industry to set up the clinical trials and the hospitals and uh, all the approvals you need. Dave is right about that. Make sure you have a consultants or people on your team who know how to get that job done. That is absolutely it's so so, so many startups fail to realize how critical that is. So good point, Dave. Anybody oh, else God. have anything that's just a quick thought before we wrap up? I All just the guys in the room, I just, just want to put a challenge out. Do not wimp out next week. Be here for Women's Founders. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank I'd you, like Jason. to corroborate what Dave said because I'm going through that right now with a, a device that is uh, related to uh, migraine headaches. And we needed to do a lot of testing and we needed we needed to have some high end institutions. So I've gotten them into uh, McGill University's hospital system in Montreal, which is going to be a real coup. But they didn't realize this going into what we were doing. So, Dave, you're absolutely right in, in your suggestion. It's an honor to have you spend an evening with Norma and I. Thank you all. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.